if worms had feet, they'd all have like little tiny rain boots because they come out in the rain all the time. Yeah. <laughs> if worms had feet, that's the name of an album right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, like a really good alt rock album. Yeah. Yeah. And you're well, like the the your the, the the single that you'd release before the album would be called Tiny Rain Boots. Yeah, tiny exactly. Rain boots, yeah. <laughs> Church Hour. I'm, I will be your host, Reverend Ethan. With me today is Pastor. Hashtag bless James Miller. And crusty old bum. Peter. Peter. <laughs> I'm the guy that they let sleep in the pews. Yes. <laughs> We're uh, legally obligated because our church was found to be siphoning funds from the donation box to mm -hmm. fund an underground casino. Yep. And yeah. the government, uh, being the evil uh, anti-christian people that they are we're on christmas hashtag are forcing christmas. us to help the less fortunate yep. yeah uh thus peter is nobody has joined us today exactly nobody joins a church or starts a church or works at a church to help people nope it's, it's you could have just ended it right there nobody yep. works at a church uh, nobody, nobody starts a church nope guys wait i found a i found a cobbler underneath the bench oh it's a pewdiepie what oh, the fuck <laughs> Oh, that's not true. All that's set up for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All that's not true, and I hate it, and I'm going home. So goodbye. <laughs> no, I'm Ethan Palmer. Uh, I'll be your host today. This is the Lore Boys Lore Podcast. About game lore. Where we pick up uh, lore about things. Not just games, Peter. It's not all games. It's all just nerd shit. Yeah. And our brief interlude into assassinations. Yes. Yeah. Which, so uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to T Matt Podcast, who's like, oh, I can't wait to listen to this one because I've talked to them on Instagram. They're like, yeah, whatever the gamers, I don't yeah, know if you get it. Him. And then finally, I was just like, yeah, you're not getting what you're expecting. <laughs> <laughs> this is a not about the yeah. assassinations. Yeah. Like, shout out to shout out to T Matt Hope. Uh, their little hiatus. They they recharge. The, they they reduce those batteries. Yeah. And uh, get back to podcasting. Well, ours was really like ours was a lot longer than we expected, but honestly, the hiatus was good. Yeah. Although right now we keep picking up so much steam, I don't think we'll stop anytime yeah, I don't soon. feel like stopping honestly yeah I'm no. like I'm in the I'm in the swing of things right now yeah and uh, it, it, it's just better and better but yeah we're uh what about you Jambo we're a comedy podcast <laughs> we're a comedy podcast that talks about uh video game lore and stuff for anybody who's just tuning in for the first time maybe Peter's friend Michelle this is our second take and yep. we were talking about her we we're talking about her behind her back yep and maybe she's listening for the first time and we just want to say hey we're not actually hey. talking about her behind her back hey, because we're recording this we're gonna put it on the internet that so is true. really you know that is true but the one that's lost to the annals of time. That's yeah, we're just talking... The annals of time, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, say it right. I'm we're talking about... I'm a, her. I am an, a language purist. You will say things properly. <laughs> purist. Okay, you a will purist. speak properly. <laughs> <laughs> speak properly. Speak. So, so, how's everyone doing today? Good. You guys all right? A little hungover. A little hungover? Yeah, colleague birthday yesterday. You, hey, but I'm drinking wine now. You burned the, burned the candle at both ends last night? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's my boy, oh, Petey. Oh, he loves to drink. Hey. <laughs> Got an Uber home? He's so cool. Oh, one, of, one, of my, one of my colleagues is in town from the States as well, so we took her out oh, to cool. a few uh, Canadian bars because okay. uh, we had stopped in uh, Canada. Yeah. Nice. That yeah, is nice. fun. I love that place. She says Montreal, uh, which is so fucking weird. Hey. That's cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How yeah, do we say it? Montreal. Montreal. It's Montreal. M U N. M Montreal. I live in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Quebec. I live in Montreal. That's how we say it. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's, how it. that's how we say it. Casual conversation. <laughs> you see, I, I wasn't even going to comment on that. That was a normal sentence to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about Dead Space this week. Yay! Talking about uh, markers. Talking about uh, necromorphs. Talking yep. about uh, weird ass alien good good shit. Uh, yep. Spiritual successor to I guess our Doom cast. Yep. So. Peter's played all the games. I've played one of the games. Ethan's played two of the games. I want to say. I've okay. I've touched all three. Okay. Um, but I only beat the first one. Yeah, so we're talking about Dead Space today. It's a game that takes place in the future. Ooh, in space. When is it set? In Dead Space, the year 2508. Is okay, it, so it's way in the future. The now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, full disclosure, I may say 2058 at some point, but I mean 2508. Okay. Okay. Because when I was writing the script today, I kept writing 2058. 
I'm always like less interested in the dates as soon as it becomes I, yeah. a space thing because you yeah. never like it's all relative. You don't know where they are. And, well, like, how yeah, they it's good to know like 500 years in the future. Yeah, yeah. That's, like that's I, right. I did my best to cut a lot of that shit out of BattleTech, where it's yeah. just like November 22nd, yeah, 3061. Yeah. It's like yeah. who gives a shit? Yeah, that's it. So set your calendars, kids. So yeah. there's basically like two important like decades, which is uh, the turn of the 23rd century and the turn of the 26th century. Okay. So 2500, 2200. Uh, 2500 is where the games take place. A lot of what we'll be talking about uh, takes place in 2200 or around 2200. Back when space was still alive. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was Before dead we space. killed them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We're off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, so, sometime around the 20, turn of the 26th century, like I said, things go a little south for our pale blue dot. Oh, yeah. Humanity has used up nearly all of the viable resources on planet Earth and are using the remainder to stave off an extinction-level event caused by the rapacious use of those resources. Sounds like something humanity would do. You think? I, I don't know, this man. This is the most far-fetched part of the whole, yeah. Yeah. The whole script. Like, Everything's perfect. Us? Yeah. I mean, Totally fine. Us? Overused? No. I don't think so. I've Pass never ever done anything in my life. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Pass me another beer. Yeah. Overused? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me another hit. That of good that, stuff. Of that beer. Uh, so Give me another hit of those resources. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a hit of that bismuth, baby. <laughs> uh, the remaining humans have realized that they need supplies to survive. Go figure. What? And also that there are none left to gather on Earth. Go mm. figure. A company known as the Concordance Extraction Corporation, or CEC. So this is like the U UAF from the Doom. Yeah. Or the Fedcom from Battletech. It's just like... They're the big evil business the, boys. The, the bad corporation. The big space corp. Yeah, Badcorporation.org. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are, are admittedly <laughs> less evil, but they are evil in the capitalist sense where they they don't care about consequences. They are, yeah. It, it's like a they're, they're, wanted they're, levels of irresponsibility. Yeah, yeah. They're evil in a very real uh, mm -hmm. sense of the word. If Not you like a, we're going to yeah. open portals to hell. Yeah, but, well, it's like Fedcom. Like, yeah, exactly. They're, they're just... They're evil... Simply because they're so rich in power. That's it. That ideal that ideology does not make sense to us because we can't travel fast. But if you can just travel fast enough, you can burn up as much as you want. Because in theory, there's always going to be more. Right? Yeah. And you just keep on going until space, like the Big Bang, pushes everything so far away that you can't even keep up with it because it's moving faster than the speed of light. But yeah. so, th so this company, the yeah. CEC, uh, engineer a ship they claim could save all of humanity, the USG Ishimura. The Ishimura's 200 years old? Yep. Hachi. Oh, at, the, shit. At, at the time of the games. Hachi, much indeed. Um, <laughs> oh, no, wait, sorry. Uh, no, not at the time of the games. Uh, at the, it's not 200 years old. The it's, MSG Ish Ishimura? I don't have the... the <laughs> yeah. uh, it, I don't have the uh, the date for its creation, but it's, it's nowhere near that old. Okay. We're not in 2200 yet. We're in 2500. We're going to flash back. Okay. Oh, okay. So it, around 2500, there's an extinction level event happening on Earth, and they, they build this machine. It's maybe like a decade old. Oh, okay. okay. What's that, uh, the name of that when they do that in movies, when they start off in the middle? Of the in medias res. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Emperor's New Groove. You know, he starts off in the oh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, yeah. jungle, and then it's like, well, let me explain this. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. That's what we're doing. I'm, I'm just learning of this term, and apparently <laughs> most, of my po most, most of my episodes are <laughs> in media res. Because, yeah. Yeah. I am bad at planning. Because I, I, I start writing and I'm like, I'm going to talk about the Dead Space games. Where did the Dead Space games start? Oh, I start writing about them. I'm like, there's a lot of backstory here. And I host a, a podcast about backstory. Oh, <laughs> so let's jump back. Ethan's a secret uh, director. He just doesn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for those who have played the first Dead Space game. Like me? Uh, you and you? I've only played the second or the third and I can't remember which no. one it is. The third one sucks. Uh, I yeah. think it's two. I, I mean, the third, I, I didn't hate the third one. I, I think two and three both weren't what I I wanted out of a Dead Space game. Yeah. I loved the first one because of the atmosphere. Yeah. And the second and third one felt like shooters to me. Everyone I've talked to says the first one was legitimately scary. The next two were just shooters. So yeah, that, that's how, that's my experience. Sort yeah. of. Uh, so the first one I find is probably the most consistently spoopy, but uh, the second one does introduce those like raptor type aliens that like peek around corners oh, and chirp right, at right, you. Right, yeah, yeah. And like that, there's a whole sequence there in like a storage yard where there's a bunch of fucking containers everywhere and they're just like kind of there's like two peeking around yeah. and there's always another one behind you it just scares the shit out of you even though your arms are the fucking teeth yeah. and then in the second one you can like make an acid shockwave gun and there's co-op and it's 
Like, yeah. it, that, that game's fucking long, too. Dead Space yeah. 3 is, like, 20 hours. I remember playing it, and I'm, like, getting all these crazy guns and it being so cool, but then, like, the plasma cutter's still the best gun, like, yeah. one of the first guns It is you objectively get. still the because, best gun. Yeah, so yeah, fucking you can, you so can satisfying shoot. to use, just cut their limbs off. Yeah, yeah you can so shoot, cool. like, for anyone who hasn't played it, it shoots, like, a small, either horizontal or vertical, like, Line. laser, basically, yeah. Yeah. that can just cut things. Yeah, it's, it's, and necromorphs they're kind of like zombies which are like the aliens of the game they're kind of like zombies but you don't kill them by shooting them in the brain you kill them by cutting off their limbs so it's literally like you have some enemies which have uh, vertical limbs that you have to chop or horizontal limbs that you have to chop and yeah. you can use the assault rifle and you have to like strafe your line Fucking or whatever thinking man's game exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly um yeah i i love the first the first game took me so long to beat because I would get so stressed playing it. Oh, yeah. That I would literally play it for two hours, and I'd have to put it down. Complications. And, I, and I'd have to play, like, Terraria or something, and just, yeah. like, calm, calm the fuck, <laughs> chill the fuck out. I think uh, that it would, I would have a much easier time playing it now after beating Resident Evil 7 in VR. Yeah. I've gone back to things like Amnesia. Oh, you, but and... you've been, like... You you were just like okay I I ain't no bitch throwing me no. in the deep end here yeah, yeah. yeah it's like it, I shot up the the fear and now I'm trying to snort it and it's just not doing anything it's not, doing, it's not, it's not hitting you the same way you're still chasing that first time yeah you're, you're mainlining the spooks and that, yeah. I, I will they say, do little keys yeah. spookiness you're just like oh it's nothing yeah. I will say playing um, Dead Space uh, by myself in my apartment with all the lights out and my 7.1 surround sound headphones on was much, much more stressful and scary than Amnesia was, okay. the first one. Like, okay. like, way more scary. Yeah. The first time one of those necromorphs just stand, like, you just see a dead body and he stands up and, like, comes at you with these, like, scythes coming out of his head. <laughs> the panic that sets in, I, I tell you. Something, so, pri something primal in your lizard brain. Like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> For those of you who have played the first Dead Space, you'll know that the USG Ishimura is the ship upon which the first game takes place. Uh, it was designed for the latest and greatest technique in resource gathering. Planet uh, cracking. A, pra a practice called planet cracking. The Ishimura's job oh. was to mine the other planets uh, for their most rare and valuable resources and take them back to Earth. Uh, even though multiple planet crackers will be made, enough to call them a small fleet, uh, the Ishimura remained the iconic symbol of mankind's will to survive even after all of these decades. Thank so the planet cracking is just like taking all the resources out of a planet and moving on? Yeah, like basically. blow it open. Okay. If you, it, I don't know if you ever saw it in the first one. There's like parts in the first game where you can like look out the window oh. and it's got like these laser tethers on like this continent sized rock that it's like ripped out of the planet and yeah. it's taking uh, minerals out of. Yeah. Do the planets look like hazelnuts or something? Like, yeah. <laughs> they want the insides. <laughs> <laughs> they they split like uh, cashews. It's like Ferrero yeah. Rochers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's just like they like blast it over like Nutella, just like <laughs> <laughs> globbing on the windshield. Look like, at the windshield wipers going, just leaving smears. Oh, like. dude, I was gonna say you'd never be able to use wipers on a fucking uh, yeah on uh, Nutella. So th <laughs> thanks to planet cracking, mankind was thriving once more and basking in resources aplenty. By the year twenty five oh eight, the Ishimura had performed thirty four successful planet cracks and wow. is in the process of beginning its thirty fifth of a little planet known as Aegis 7. Is uh, that the planet in the game 1? That is the planet. So the right right after the 35th There's planet crack. Say that, sorry. Right right after the 35th planet crack is where the game takes place. 35th? 35th. Okay. Yes. Mm. Does uh, that have any significance? Nope. Uh, Not really. I mean, does the number 35 mean anything to you? Yeah, it can if you want. 35 spelled to. backwards is 666. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Dude, there's, is this a Doom crossover? <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I, know, I know, that's what I knew was going to oh get you because you love that dumb shit. <laughs> I love that dumb, dumb shit. <laughs> dumb shit. <laughs> so, 300 years prior to the creation of the USG Ishimura, something was found on Earth. What was it? An alien artifact was discovered by Earth's government in the year 2214. It was on Earth? Yep. Oh. The very first one. Uh, it was at first hidden from the public to prevent panic, but one researcher, Michael Altman, who would come to be known as the reluctant prophet, ended up leaking the information. <laughs> it's like the life of Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the black marker was discovered by Michael Altman and his team of researchers in an asteroid impact crater off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It's just a it sharpie. It killed the dinosaurs. It, Are you fucking kidding? It was concluded that the marker landed on Earth along with an asteroid that caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs some 65 million years ago. Oh my god. Wait, is it just a sharpie? A black marker? Yeah, it's a yeah. black marker. <laughs> on it, like five times today when researching it, I kept trying to pull up black marker and red marker and yeah. I kept, like sharpie is the first thing to come up when you type that. You have to do black marker dead space, but I kept doing it. <laughs> my god. Uh, because I kept closing my tabs like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
so yeah it was the it what it came with the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs is is what they what they conclude uh altman's findings uh and release of the information would spawn a religion known as unitology and it spread faster than any other religion in history dang i mean very physical proof of this this obviously so yeah. what, what the the black marker was I, I i guess i should probably touch on it it's, it's like that twisted thing eh? it's it's it looks kind of like a helix it, yeah. it's it stands probably like 50 50 feet tall oh it's huge it's i mean it's big like 50 feet tall, okay not that much like 10 times me less than that yeah 10, uh, well, I 10 just knees on my shoulder like 10 of me standing on my own shoulders is, yeah. is how big where do i get that but it's tall yeah, one yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe to Lord Boys nine, Premium, and yeah. Where can we get nine more Ethan's yeah. <laughs> today? Yeah, I got, um, I got some back at home. Yeah. Yeah. I was because th- I was thinking about like the marker itself in in Dead Space One is like not big. It's like the size of a fridge. Did you like push it around? That's a piece of the marker. Oh, yeah. Because do you remember at the end of Dead Space One when you bring it back? He's getting in the ship and he's leaving. He's looking at at the the full marker there. Okay, Mark. Yeah, you guys get way ahead of me. We are getting yeah. way ahead of everything. Sorry, never mind. It is. Yeah. It is big. What what you can push around is a piece of the marker. Okay. That they take off. Okay. Um, we're not gonna really touch on the piece of the marker today. It it's not really relevant. You could you could chip pieces off sometimes. Uh, okay. Is what I'll so, say about it. Fun um, fact. <laughs> yeah. So a marker, a giant fifty foot helix looking thing, uh, into co- Earth. covered in covered in uh, runes. Yeah, so, spooky in, alien like, runes. Carvings yeah. and like hieroglyphs that are indecipherable at the time. So Altman's finding and releasing the information spawned the religion Unitology. My, uh, Michael Altman, like I said, would come to be known as the reluctant prophet, prophet because he was not a believer in Unitology, nor did he found the religion. He was only the scientist at the crater who was immune to the effects or the dead loved one's message of the marker. The what? So what are the effects of, of the marker? Yeah. Uh, mostly the marker eff- emits a specific frequency. Uh, the effects of living humans exposed to this frequency vary. A majority of humans are unable to decipher the signal, thus perceiving it as mere noises, images, and meanings without co- coher- coherence, which ultimately causes the person to become paranoid and prone to constant hallucinations. So oh. if you're... Most most people, when they get close to the marker, they just go crazy. They start seeing stuff. And... <laughs> they start living like they're, they're in the movie Dead Spaceballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're right beside John Candy in a fursuit. <laughs> <laughs> which is my fetish. Uh, <laughs> the John Candy part. <laughs> yeah, John Candy in a fursuit. Yeah. yeah. Called Uncle Real Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's good. That's two good laughs I got out of I'm, I'm going home. I'm done. You're slaying me today, Peter. <laughs> <my God. laughs> uh, so, a marker uh, tended to create the illusion of a loved one, like in the games Isaac Clark sees his uh, girlfriend. What's her oh. name? Uh, Mia. You put me on blast. Um. Margaret. No, it's like Caroline or something. It's not um, Caroline. No, that's Caroline. a bad. <laughs> it's Camellia. It's the Hollow Notes woman. Uh, oh, Camellia. <laughs> Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, Nicole Brennan. Yeah. Doctor Brennan. Uh, I actually I have the um, the volumes one through six of the comic series. Oh yeah. Which is like uh, Nicole on the planet before the as the planet crack happens when they just when they find the. Spoiler alert for this podcast, they're going to find a marker on the planet. Yeah. Um, yeah, really interesting. Maybe I'll lend it to you if you want to read it. Uh, so when the frequency comes into contact with dead organic tissue, it has the capacity to reanimate cells, creating necromorphs. That doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? I mean, it's just, that's like magic. <laughs> yeah, it's like zombies or, yeah. or whatever. But, Zambos. But hey, yeah. it's a video game, Peter. I demand reality. Peter, it's not real <laughs> life. All right, Peter, this is 300 years in the future. Maybe they've discovered the Didn't the I technology. tell you how much I love the fact it takes a month and a half to go between planets and Battletech and how cool I think that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How fucking boring I am? No, Peter, don't don't offend him. He's pointing a, a plasma cutter right at your right arm right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Peter, Peter, I hate to be the one to tell you this. A month and a half between planets... It's not that... Is That's, like, un, maybe unrealistically fast. That's fast. They never would have reached the Outer Rim, my dude. At realistic uh, speeds. That's true. <laughs> Throw in the my dude for some yeah. soft. My dude. Yeah. yeah. My dude. Fine. Just Whatever. So necromorphs, we kind of touched on them earlier. They're uh, they have like science coming out of their head and stuff. Yeah, they get really deformed and fucked up. What, yeah, can you just d- describe a necromorph in its entirety? There's like you. The uh, okay. Webster's Dictionary defines them as mutated and reanimated corpses <laughs> reshaped into horrific new forms by a recombinant extraterrestrial infection. Uh, I mean, did you just? 
That was really good. If that's that what I have written down. Okay, okay. So I was like, going to say, anyway, wow. So, yeah. yeah, like, just, he just improvises. Yeah. He throws in recombinant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, um... That's a word people say. Yeah. <laughs> that's a word I say all the time. <laughs> um, I have a word of the day calendar. That was the word today. So. No, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um... Yeah, so in game, there's a lot of different forms. Basically, every enemy you fight is a form of uh, necromorph. Yeah. Uh, the most common one, I don't know what they're called, but they're just like a human, but they also have like scythe arms. I think they're called slashers. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. I do. It's like a, a Doc Ock from Spider-Man who never went to the gym and is undead. Yeah, they're naked. Kay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they're naked. They have their arms and then also their robot arms. And <laughs> they're not robot arms. They're, <laughs> they're not they're robot people. arms. They're, they're big, like, arms. extra bony arms with, like, size, like a they praying mantis. They have sides that come out of the palms. And yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's like a praying mantis, and they, they come at you, like, and they'll they'll fake death, and they can, like, hide their, their sides, and then, so you'll just see, like, you see dead bodies throughout the game, because yeah. when Isaac Clark arrives at the USG Ishimura, everybody on it is dead. Every yeah. single other person is dead. So, uh you'll see like dead bodies all over the place and there will be this one dead body that decides to get up and come at you with these oh these crazy yeah you guys are giving me flashbacks arms. actually from like walking through a nursery and then it like jumped up and got <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah there's babies yeah, yeah. <laughs> that have like tentacles coming yeah, out of them yeah. Uh, there's the, 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 I just call them the panther ones. They're the ones that kind of have like the two legs, the little snake tail yeah, that like yeah. kind of jump around. Yeah. I and mean, there's the weird bat ones with the proboscis that they can like poke into people. What's and a proboscis? They, it's the thing Scorpion that butterflies thing? use to oh, drink yeah, nectar. Oh, it's like a, like a, what a, a mosquito uses to bite you. It's a, it's a, it's a straw mouth. I've always pronounced oh. it proboscis. But maybe it's pronounced proboscis. I don't know. I feel like you know what's crazy? We've been doing this for a year. I feel like we've had this discussion on the podcast before. No, that was about hibiscus being a dance or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I, I remember that debate. See, I, yeah. Our, me and Peter didn't talk for weeks. <laughs> That's why we went on hiatus. Yeah. Exactly. We couldn't be in the same fucking room as you did. It's a dance, goddammit! <laughs> My mother taught it to me when I was a kid. I'm like almost 100% sure we had that conversation. I, I, I know it's yeah. really hard to remember all the stuff we did when we were drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If uh, we did, it's recorded. It's out there somewhere. Yeah. Yes. So they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but uh, one thing is pretty consistent. The resulting creatures are extremely aggressive and will attack any uninfected organism on site. There's the big fat ones that cut themselves open. They're full of tiny little spiders. Yeah. That, or like little raviolis uh, that like flip-flop all over the place. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, the Earth government, knowing the effects of this first marker after a bit, uh, because the first team that went there, uh, Michael Altman was the only one immune to the paranoia and hallucinations that it caused. Uh, Found this alien rock and everybody went crazy. Uh, yeah. Should we tell anybody? Yeah. I'm assuming their answer is no. Well, they said no, but then Michael Altman spilled the beans. Oh. He said, we found this this alien rock. I'm the only one who survived, basically. Did he move to Russia to like not get extradited to the he United actually, States? I didn't I didn't write this bit down, but he got uh, he was killed oh. at some point. Oh. And Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby did it. <laughs> you, you know, there's... there's it's it's cool. There's two sides of it. It some people say the Unitologists, the the religion that was founded and and held him as their their reluctant prophet and said we worship we worship the black marker. Um, they said, oh, he was killed by the government because he had some secrets. And then the government said we think he was killed by Unitologists, like fanatics, basically, because he was he was not a Unitologist, not was, pious enough. Yeah, well, he was not a Unitologist at all. He yeah. just released the information. Did the whatever, Unitologists so. use the metric system or the imperial system? <laughs> the metric system. <laughs> okay. I mean, come on. The Obviously. right unit of measurement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The right units. Uh, so the Earth government, knowing the effects of this first marker, decide to attempt to reverse engineer it in the name of limit, limitless energy and research. What? Oh. Uh, so this thing, uh, the black marker, is capable of producing uh, like unlimited power. Okay. It, See that it, I didn't know because that doesn't. That's a really big leap of logic. Like, look, it can raise the dead and makes people go crazy. What if <laughs> it could make my what car? If, what if I could put it in my car? Yeah. What yeah. if I hook it up to my car battery? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What will it do for me? Huh? <laughs> yeah. You can read fucking marker. <laughs> you can recharge your Prius, but just bring a gun. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> that's it. Look, if the, if the wear, wear world a tinfoil into, hat. <laughs> <laughs> if the trusty world turns into some bloody blades and cut your hands off, yep. Yeah. Who warned you? Yeah. It's like you get into a crash instead of the airbag deploying. It's like this meat sack. Yeah, yeah. It's a fucking necromorphs in the back. Yeah. Ah! Oh my god. Uh, so the copies, they do end up making copies, though the copies are imperfect and they come out more reddish, earning the names red markers. Oh, I, I can follow that train of thought. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's probably because whatever the alien, the extraterrestrial resource that they use to make the original one doesn't exist on Earth. 
So earlier in the podcast, I mentioned that they were running out of bismuth. Apparently bismuth is red, and people think it's bismuth that they used instead. Sure. I thought that was a place. <laughs> yeah, it is. It also is, though. Um, it's also in Pepto-Bismol. That's where they get the biz. Hey, Pepto-Bismol. Pepto like, is it a pinkish hue because of all the white medicine in there? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, then, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, white and red. Yeah, that makes pink. My tummy's upset. Here, have some red marker. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. It turns to a monster. <laughs> so I have a footnote here that I won't really get on. Um, I, won't, I won't touch on too much, but I will mention it. The There was sovereign, there was a civil war for the humans around this time uh, where there was, like, the outer rim, basically, the, the clans. Oh, we're called the sovereign colonies, and uh, they had a civil war where they wanted to break free from the Earth government. And uh, apparently, some some sources claim that they were the ones that created the red markers. They like struck at Earth, stole the black marker, and then ended up creating it. Uh, other sources say like unitology was behind the revolt from the sovereign colonies. Uh, and, and they like seeded dissent. Yeah, and and, and basically like there was a man behind the curtain who said like, oh, go steal the black marker and re reverse engineer it because we worship it and we yeah. want more things to worship. Yeah. Uh, so these markers continue to be revered by unitologists who have based their religion on them. Uh, unitologists, while they don't know the meaning of the inscriptions on the markers, puzzle over it. Uh, most believe that the, mes the message there will reveal the true origin and meaning of human life. They believe the marker contains a code that holds the key to eternal life <laughs> for humans and can bring about a physical paradise to save all of mankind. That's another. Yeah, it's actually just a parallel to the Lion King soundtrack where, you know, it sounds really fancy, but if you translate <laughs> yeah, it, it just exactly. says, I am a lion. I'm a lion. <laughs> yes, it's I'm a lion. A lion. I, am a a lion. <laughs> I am a marker. This is a marker. Yeah. Here is my marker. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> A marker come from space. Yeah, that's another kind of crazy leap of logic where they were just like, "Yeah, okay, uh, it, uh, I can't read it, but what it probably says, yeah. <laughs> secret to eternal life." Yeah. Just just hear me out. And then everybody apparently was just like, yeah, that's probably what it says. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's, like, it's like one of those Chinese tattoos. It. it just says like dumplings on that's it. it. It's like, uh, yeah, man, it means like purity and commitment. <laughs> what is everyone afraid of? Death. Oh, yeah. something comes out of like nowhere and then is there. It's so, I think that's the easiest thing to convince the masses. With. Cue, yeah, yeah. cue the elephant from the Flintstones looking at the camera going, it's religion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> like one guy suggested this. It's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Probably true. So I, I didn't, I didn't touch, uh, too much on unitology, but yeah, it's, it's a cult that, that follows it. And, uh, they end up actually, um, weaponizing at a certain point and uh -oh. i don't know if i wrote it down at any point in here so jacob danik is the leader of unitology and yep. he basically forms a uh special like a sect of of the religion which is like hyper violent and is willing to to fight for the the markers and all this other okay, stuff. okay yeah there's always got to be one it's always that Fight one. Fight for your right to marker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like pouring wine right now, so I'm away from the mic. I had to swing back. Oh, no, I gotta get this joke on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> hold the wine. Hold that wine. Uh, so one copy of the of the black marker, known as marker three A, was sent to Aegis Seven for study, research, and experimentation. Do you guys remember what uh, Age of Seven was? Yeah, they exploded it for resources in the first game. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, that's... Well, Age of Seven was the 35th cracker. Was that? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the that's, team... a that's the uh, tragically hip zone. Yeah, the 35th cracker. <laughs> the, the team that was sent to study it on this distant planet makes the discovery that the code written on the marker matches the necromorph contagion. And they also note that marker 3A emitted a field or dead space <gasps> that prevented necromorph dna from replicating oh i included that because in the wiki uh the words dead space to describe uh, things in general was was so prevalent <laughs> like anytime they talked about like oh it's empty space they wouldn't call it empty space it's yeah. a dead space <laughs> in, in quotation. I okay thought, you guys i thought it was very That's good it. uh as time goes on the team does go crazy like most people do. Dang. People turn into necromorphs. Dang. And they are becoming overrun. Fuck, three for three, man. One yeah. side. That, that's like evil business boy bingo. It's yeah. Just like, oh, <laughs> god damn. Everybody I sent out on this experiment yeah, was yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> died and then turned into flesh-eating monsters. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Hey, so, t so team uh, team study marker 3A, uh, are you guys there? <laughs> okay. Uh, so how are things going down there? <laughs> well, uh, okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, people are going crazy. Well, that's not good. Are people turning into necromorphs? Oh, they are. Okay, okay. Are you guys getting overrun? Oh, you are. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's three for three, isn't it? <laughs> people, are go people are going crazy. Turn into necromorphs. And you're being overrun? Oh, okay. This is right. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to grab lunch. Yeah, yeah I'm going to grab lunch, and then uh, we'll, we'll, set, we'll set something up for you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'll, tell the, it's all, I'll tell the board of directors at our meeting on Thursday. <laughs> I know we are currently the previous Friday, so you can hold yeah. it down for six days. Eh? Okay. <laughs> Could you send me an email? Uh, maybe uh, send an email, and we'll, we'll set up a calendar event for it. Is yeah, like an Outlook. Uh, <laughs> let your families know in uh, 10 to 15 business days. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, 15 business days? <laughs> you can do like an internet install yeah. installation. Yeah. <laughs> So, one scientist creates what he calls a pedestal, something he allegedly saw in a vision. Exactly. I am doubting that this man invented the pedestal. <laughs> uh, uh, something he calls a pedestal. Yeah. It's a special thing. He's really Look at this. <laughs> I call it a pedestal. Look and behold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, mere mortals, behold the power of science. <laughs> Place whatever you wish upon it. And, <laughs> And he's really like building up this pedestal, man. He's putting the pedestal on a pedestal. Yeah, yeah. I got the pedestals on a pedestal. <laughs> yeah, he's so funny. So he's like, "You're really putting this up on a pedestal." He's like, "What? What?" He's like, "What? You, why'd you say that?" Yeah. It has been an expression for 500. Years. Where did you get that word? <laughs> <laughs> People say it all the time, man. No, that's mine. I came up with it myself. So then he made it. Then he turned the marker evil to get revenge on the fucking grammar. Yeah. <laughs> grammar is the real enemy in dead space. Uh, so, Dead space quotes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this scientist basically <laughs> basically got a vision. Just like, everybody's going crazy. Everybody's hallucinating. Everybody's getting super paranoid. And this guy gets a vision. And he's like, guys, I know what we got to do to stop it. I know we're all having nightmares. I know we're having, a, all having nightmares. But I just got a vision. John Candy. And it was of this thing, which <laughs> amplifies the dead space uh, made by the marker. So like I just said. I love the fact that you say it that way. You could totally, it's on the recording, hear the air quotes. Yeah. Like, Dead space. You can yeah. hear your arms moving. And yeah. Like, uh, well, uh, yeah. If, if I say dead space uh, and it, it doesn't sound like it's in quotations, Jamie will add them in post. Yeah. He'll, he'll add the quotations in post. Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, <laughs> so, Magic of show business. So like I said, uh, marker 3A emits a field which prevents necro necromorph DNA from up replicating. Okay. So this particular marker does emit a field where necromorphs don't necessarily happen. Oh, but, I remember this in the game. That's why they have to go put it back yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. Make, it, make us whole again. In it, yeah, in yeah. its in its spot in the planet, it doesn't it doesn't do bad things. It makes people go crazy, mm -hmm. but it doesn't turn people into crazy monsters. Yeah. But then they decide to move it. And it starts making people into crazy oh, monsters. Oh, yeah. But before, th before that... It was the buried part that makes them into monsters. It's yeah. Just, you gotta cover up the buried part again. Yeah. You can't move it around. So, so they move it, and everyone starts turning into necromorphs, and this guy has a vision, what he thinks from the, the marker, uh, saying, make us whole again, yeah. put us back in our spot, but he doesn't do that. He, he finds a way to amplify the, de the dead space region around the marker, uh... And then they end up using it to uh, beat back and seal away what's called the hive mind and the rest of the infection within the planet. That was a big worm. Yeah, that's like the one of the big bosses. It's the last boss. It's the last in the boss. first game. Yeah. It's a worm. You might say the big boss. Okay. It's a bit. It's a big worm. Yeah. It's got tentacles. Worm with tentacles. That sounds more like a like a millipede or something. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. Feet. Because worms don't have feet, do they? No. no. Most of the ones. A worm basically is a tentacle. They have like it. those spiky little bits on them if you ever touch <laughs> yeah. one, so they can move forwards uh, okay. in the dirt. A yeah, worms. Worms don't really proboscis all over the place. <laughs> They've got hibiscus plants everywhere. Yeah. If worms had feet, they'd all have like little tiny rain boots because they come out in the rain all the time. Yeah. <laughs> if worms had feet, that's the name of an album right there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah like a really good alt rock album. Yeah. <laughs> and you're well, like the the your the, the the single that you'd released before the album would be called Tiny Rain Boots. Yeah, tiny exactly. rain boots, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're. That, that we're just creating this whole new like Portland band right now. Oh yeah, you're yeah. welcome, band, nameless band in Portland. Yeah, I saw. Like, yeah, I saw. <laughs> Dog Doug Stanhope uh, this week, and they like comedians often compare Montreal to like the Portland of Canada, yeah, basically. Yeah. So that's us. We, we Portland, can Maine, thing. right? Yes, that's the one that everyone talks about yeah, when they say Portland. Totally. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they end up uh, stealing away the hive mind, which was like the leader of the necromorphs at the time. Yeah, and the rest of the infection within the planet, though they are still scenario five by the rest of mankind. Scenario five is basically where. 
this company when or not this company sorry before the company but when things go bad on an alien planet they just nuke the whole thing and kill all life Whoa. on the surface five yep. is like a bad number for a lot of things uh, a stage five tear whenever you're giving birth you can only imagine what that is is, is that to the butthole yeah okay ouch I, yeah I so can't just imagine. nuke it get rid of it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the nuke the butthole. Yeah, exactly. send in the nukes <laughs> yeah Every hospital has nukes underneath it for just such a day. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a hostile butthole in a scenario five, a stage five terror up here. Yeah. Send up the nukes. You need two doctors with the same key. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, but the keyholes are actually ripped into each other. <laughs> <laughs> so it, the scenario five kills all life on the surface. But no, oh, but they're underground. But they just sealed away the hive mind and the rest of the necromorphs Fuck. underground. So. Well, it turns out that there's more to necromorphs than just being horrific spiny boys. Okay. The, <laughs> the sole purpose of necromorphs seems to be to acquire more bodies and flesh to convert and spread the infection. Blood for the blood god. Kind of like zombies or blood for the blood god, if you will. Sure. Uh, some unitologists actually believe that they are the heralds of humanity's ascension. So at a certain point, unitology kind of goes to, the, like, necromorphs are a thing. The black marker is causing them on Earth if you let leave a dead body near it for too long you know uh the infection never really spreads on earth but yeah but people are aware like that's what happens and unitologists say like hey like this is this is what should happen we should well, let's let's join let's be one with it with yeah it, i know? like getting stabbed in the forehead with like a spiny uh, spiny thing yeah, and then and, i turn into a crazy monster and, and i having my corpse be puppeted around yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> i attack my friends and family with reckless abandon yeah that's it. but i'm i'm making them i'm making them one with me so. yeah forearms are better than two he damn right yeah so the necromorphs are controlled they're not just mindless uh via the markers by a group of entities known as the brethren moons something oh something yeah, we touched on before the episode started yeah well, that i had mentioned the brother moons this is this is because this is the, when dead space 3 gets so fucking stupid peter said it's complete lunacy before the class and i thought it was very funny <laughs> before the class uh the cast i, I, I meant to say cast and then I just mess up another word. I love that you said a class though. That, that's oh yeah, class. Better. Yeah. Peter's the teacher. Oh no, Ethan's the teacher. Yeah. Peter's the snarky guy at the back of the class. He always has a quick-witted thing to <laughs> P- say. Yeah. Peter's the <laughs> me in class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan's the teacher. Peter's the Ethan. James, yeah. you can be James. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that lunacy as a way to describe the brotherhood. I, I didn't yeah. intend on on that. I was still hungover when yeah. I walked in, so I I, I was Lunar. not I was not sure, as quick-witted as I may normally be. Um, but you're, yeah, you're, so in Dead Space Three, you fight one by using a alien. Wait, a brother of the moon? A brother um, moon. A brethren moon. Yeah, it's like a big angry moon. <laughs> so it's so fucking stupid. So brethren moons are gigantic spacefaring necromorphs created by infecting an entire planet with necromorph DNA. Brethren moon, it will be discovered, are the source of the maker signals. Okay. So the moons consume new worlds and reproduce by sending out black markers, which travel through space and impact upon planets. You know what they really missed an opportunity here was zombie dinosaurs. That would have been fucking <laughs> yeah. sweet. Yeah. I'm, but, pi I'm picturing like the Majora's Mask moon, like just ever moving closer and then consuming scouting. worlds. Yeah, exactly. yeah, no, they're much dumber. They have like big tentacles and like a big eye coming out of them. Uh, so, you, shoot, you shoot like rocks at one of them. Yeah. When you, f you fight a moon as Isaac Clark. In Dead Space 3, for the record, spoilers. And it's uh, just as fucking stupid as that sounds. <laughs> What's stupider, fighting a moon or fighting a windmill? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, if we're going to bring the it moon. back. Fighting the moon. It's <laughs> got to be fighting the moon is stupider fighting than moon. fighting a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> From the perspective of Don Quixote. I was going to say, I think I just have our artwork now. It's Don Quixote fighting like some sort of infested windmill. Or Isaac Clark fighting an infested windmill. Yeah, exactly. Or Don Quixote fighting the moon. Yeah, exactly. Don Quixote's going to be there, okay? So like high class boys. The whole thing seems to be, in response to your zombie dinosaurs comment, it seems to be that the Brethren Moon and the necromorphs and the markers target intelligent life. Uh, it's unknown if the markers target planets capable of intelligent life or if, and this is... Uh, that wouldn't make any sense. Exactly. That, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, they ta target intelligent life, so they blast the dinosaurs, and it's just like... It's, it's, I guess it paid off, but it's like yeah. some sort of like risky stock trade. It was like, no, no, trust me. Trust me, other moons. <laughs> yeah. This is totally going to be fine. Just we just need to be patient for seventy million years. Seventy million years, maybe something will come around. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like mining uh, for Bitcoin. How old's our moon? Like, 
Our moon? Yeah. It, Three. Like a billion or something? Yeah. Something. It, it's from... It's Earth or, is, no, it, no, it'd be older than... Older, it, no. It's like five, six billion years old. No. It's parts of Earth and Earth, another planet, Earth, as far as I know. Earth is four billion years old. Yeah. Earth was impacted by an asteroid at some point in the last four billion Wasn't bil- it like another planet years. called Thea? I don't know. Okay. I doubt it was a planet. I, I think it was Caroline. Caroline! <laughs> um, but yeah, and then the moon basically broke off from Earth. But yeah. Uh, so okay. Jacob Danik, the leader of <laughs> okay, unitology, thinks that the markers landed on Earth and were responsible for creating intelligent life. Oh, okay, okay. Or they just target every planet capable of, of hosting intelligent life, assuming it's within a certain range like Earth, you know? Yeah. Within that, that sweet spot. And they just target every planet like that and just wait for intelligent life. Brother Moon's really big on evolution. They were just like, Look, yeah. I know everybody, like everything on Earth right now yeah. is either a rat or a giant dinosaur, but at some point we are going to have mm, perfect mm. little pink bodies to live inside oh, of. Don't yes. you worry. <laughs> chef kiss. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> chef kiss. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the markers they send out. Chef Boyardee will- Moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the markers they send out will do as they did on Earth. They'll cause hallucinations and paranoia, paranoia and encourage intelligent life to replicate the markers. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. I was holding that's, it. That's what you were doing. Yeah. I thought you were trying to move it. No. Oh, it's not that. It's it's that one there. Yeah. What the hell did that happen? I did, I did move it forward like a little bit because like my back was starting to sweat from staying on right across, but then it fell down. Okay. I'll just I'll just do that take from the top. Yeah. Sorry. The markers will send, uh, will they send out? Will do as they did on Earth. They'll cause hallucinations and paranoia, and, and encourage intelligent life to replicate the markers. Bunch of fucking paranoid dinosaurs. What, what, a bunch <laughs> of, what a bunch of idiots! That'll never work on humans, am I right? Uh, <laughs> all while, oh. Oh, oh, all while affecting dead credits. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> it's just like we're dead. Yeah. <laughs> or it's a uh, the sunny intro. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Humans replicate <laughs> red mark. <laughs> <laughs> Humans replicate like <laughs> <laughs> uh, All while affecting dead organic tissue and creating necromorphs. Once the necromorph infestation claims the majority of a planet's population, the marker will initiate a convergence event or the creation of a new brethren moon, which was the end of dark, uh, dead, I almost said dark souls, dead space three, right? It was the convergence event where the moon that you fight was the moon that was just created. Does it give birth? Like, does it come out of a crater of another moon? I don't know. I haven't played, I haven't played dead space. I try to remember what it looks like. It is just like a bit, it, it, it's like a bunch of tentacles of meat coming out of a moon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, planet, it's, it's a planet. It's a planet-sized circle with, with tentacles coming out. It's a hentai moon. It is. It, yeah, exactly. Uh, so how it's created? Once the convergence is begun, the flesh of necromorphs and other dead tissue within the marker's area of influence are thrown into the stratosphere. So everyone just like raptures the fuck out, <laughs> uh, where they form a new moon. So it's not like uh, it's not like surrounding a planet or moon. Oh, it it's, doesn't hatch. It doesn't hatch out of the planet. No, it's like a big chunk of flesh that that. Gra- graviton beamed up. Okay. Ew. Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, that's gross. Oh, it's gross in here. Uh, the marker, <laughs> uh, the marker is then lifted up as well, where it moves to the center of the Brethren Moon, so that it may communicate with the rest of the network. So whatever this thing is, it seems like the marker is an essential tool. Okay. Or it's. It seems more like an essential tool than its brain. Well, you got to leave your house when they when they're picking up everybody leaving the planet. You got to bring your wallet, your phone, and your keys. Well, yeah. Sounds like an antenna to me. <laughs> your wallet, your phone, yeah. your keys, uh, your marker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> your evil marker. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like an antenna, and they use it for dire dire means. One scientist in the game uh, speculates, or in the games series, I guess, speculates that all life between the origin of the moons and humanity's home system has been extinguished by the moons. So he thinks that... Who's this? Uh, I, I didn't write down his name. Oh, okay. Uh, Oswald it's, Cobblepot. It, yeah, Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> it's Dr. An uncommon, Moon theorist. It, it's an uncommon answer to the Fermi paradox. Do you guys know what the Fermi paradox is? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, I've heard it. Um, Rack your brain. I watched number file thing about it. Um, There's a good Kurtzka shaft on it. Wait, can you give me a hint? It's about aliens. It's about it. Oh, the Fermi paradox is that there are this many suns there are this many planets to every sun there's so many possibilities that it's impossible that they're not aliens no i love it but no no it's, which is uh it? the fermi paradox states that <laughs> what you just said is a yeah. good is a good uh, place to say like there's there's no chance that there's not aliens out there but 
why has humanity never found aliens? We're uh, a relatively young species in the in, in terms of scale of the universe. So why have we never been able to contact uh, another alien race? Because we can reach really far out. Oh, at the speed of light. Oh, um, our our communications are not moving as fast as everything is moving no. away from each other. The, the Fermi paradox states that uh, there must be some sort of extinction level event that happens to every single intelligent species that that happens in the universe. Oh. That's the only way that it can be quiet out there is that every single species, it reaches a certain point and then it's, it's lights out. And how, like, how do you get past that? Oh, okay. So the, the, this thing's, this thing's answer to why the Fermi paradox exists is because God moons ate everybody. Humanity has never made contact with aliens because a giant species of apex predator has absorbed most, if not all organic tissue within our galaxy, yeah. leaving much you of do it fight dead space. You, do. Uh, you can add those quotations in post, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. I'll have to put them in. Yeah. <laughs> little, little beeps over there. Um, you do fight alien necromorphs in dead space three though. There are, legit aliens not just necromorphs in the third game because you go to an alien planet oh really that has a brother moon on it ah yeah. they're not so that third game that, that third game is, is really fucking long like you know like the, most of the marketing shows like snow and whatnot yeah that's just part of it oh yeah you start and the first like five six hours are just on a spaceship i definitely played dead space 2 now that i'm hearing about yes yeah. <laughs> yeah you like start on the you start on um, a spaceship and then you go down to the ice planet and then you go to another alien planet, and then you fight alien zombies. Like, okay. You like instead of humans, human zombies. Human zombies. Yeah. Well, that's, okay. Well, okay, alien. but even nice. if, if, as long as they're still zombies, then I yeah, guess it's like, confirmed. They're right? like the a, yeah. some kind of alien race. They're weird looking. Yeah. They're neat. Like the art, the art in Death Space has always yeah. been good. But uh, yeah, they're like legit aliens that uh, are brought back from the dead. Yeah. So, Aegis 7 had been undergoing this transformation when the researchers studying Marker 3A had succumbed to its influence, but it was stopped when they sealed the hive mind underground and extinguished all surface life on the planet. Like I said, oh, okay. that is the, like I said, I have uh, volumes one through six of the comic, comic books. Uh, 200 years later, uh, Aegis 7 has become the site of an illegal mining operation by the Concordance Extraction Company. So remember when we said, they don't care about the consequences. Yeah, we'll the, frack wherever the fuck we want. Yeah, so... Uh, Drinking water be damned. The, frack off. The planet, cracker yeah. goes, the planet Cracker goes to planets and cracks them, if you will. Um, <laughs> oh, crack, <laughs> crack, <laughs> crack, frackle, pop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's their slogan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they, they have crack, three, frackle, pop. Three gnomes are their company spokespeople. <laughs> yeah. And uh, crack, frackle, and pop are their names. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so before they, before they, <laughs> before they frackle the planet, shale krispies like. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> pieces, oh, bismuth it's pumps, just a bunch yeah. of rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Puffed up rock stuff. <laughs> Wait, listen. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just rocks. It's like. that frequency that drives you crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, like, so it's just like, I love pouring milk into my shale, uh, shale crispies, and then like milk, and then his mom just goes fucking crazy <laughs> and tears him apart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slits his dad's throat in front of him. <laughs> like, yeah. His dad gets up and is like a monster. Yeah. <laughs> How's that for some artwork? Like a kid with like a bowl of, a like, rock, little, yeah. of like little helixes, and then yeah. just like crazy eyes. Like, oh my god, yeah. Kill your parents. And then I can drop out of school <laughs> start a podcast yeah <laughs> then like oh yeah Inve invest in aflac <laughs> <laughs> yeah that might actually be uh that might actually be some really good artwork i can't remember what i had mentioned earlier we'll figure it out yeah, yeah exactly it might just so, be it, it might be like the most because i do love the ones that are complete nonsense yeah, yeah, yeah. just like yeah this episode's about dead space here's a kid eating a bowl of rock yeah. <laughs> like that's all good the other one was coyote fighting the moon but we can oh, talk yeah. shop after oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. And break. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, before the before the Ishimura shows up to crack a planet, that they send a team there to to prep it. Basically, Sorry, I just want to go back to that sentence that Jamie said. <laughs> the last one was Don Quixote fighting the moon. Like, oh yeah, that's true. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> yes, let's go. <laughs> you found the Easter egg, kids. Yeah, you listened far enough. <laughs> so the Ishimura, uh, when it goes to a planet, the team lands before before it gets there to prep the planet for the cracking and they uncover the marker. Oh. They prep the planet for the crack, and yeah. they're just like, yeah, they're just like, bomb it with that fucking Vaseline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Prep the butthole for the nukes. Uh, <laughs> so, I want that on a t-shirt. Prep the butthole for the nukes. <laughs> Pregnancy. 
colon. <laughs> no pun intended. Hey. Uh, <laughs> um, Where are yeah, we? Yeah, so the, the... We're about stage five into the podcast. Oh, now, fuck so. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't you mean scenario five? Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Yeah. Kill it. So um, the comic books take place. It's the team that goes before the Ishimura, including Isaac Clark. Uh, protagonist for the series his girlfriend goes she works for the uh cec and she goes to prep the planet and yeah. they uncover a marker and they decide to move it and it makes everyone go crazy and it kills everyone on the planet then the ishimura arrives and uh they bring it up to the ishimura don't they they bring it up to the ishimura and uh, along with some necromorphs and it kills everyone in the ishimura dang and when isaac clark shows up he is he shows up to the ishimura and everyone's dead and uh, barring a couple people, but they'll... yeah, like uh, whatever the dude and the, the dude. woman he shows up with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Drinking his white Russian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the necromorph speed on his carpet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the marker is uncovered five weeks before the arrival of the. Ishimura. I thought this just a necromorph with like the bathrobe and the yeah. Ray Bans on. <laughs> yeah. And they also uh, unseal the hive mind, which unleashes all the necromorphs that were still buried underground. And they begin to complete their own uh, convergence event, but it never ends up happening. Uh, the comic actually starts like the first page in the comic is like one of the scientists saying like, like just just nuke the planet, like kill like scenario five, kill everything on the planet. That, and then it does an in media res. Oh, uh, back to five it, five weeks earlier. Were you playing the long con right now? <laughs> no, you, this, this is why you set up the podcast. I wasn't, but I love that it worked out. But, yeah. <laughs> And that's the the lore and lead up to Dead Space, guys. Cool. Oh, good. I'm going to download the second one again. Uh, I enjoyed download my the first, first one. Uh, I, I have the first one on Origin. Okay, cool. Uh, it should. You have it on Origin? It was free. Oh, I have it on mm. Steam. I see. I still have that $20 uh, Steam card from like Christmas, so I need to use that on something. Actually. Don't use it on Dead Space 2. No? Use yeah. it on Dead Space 1, if anything. Well, that's what I mean. I already have Dead Space 2. So. Oh, there you go. You can borrow Dead Space 1. Okay, cool. Steam lets you do that, remember? Does it? Yeah, family sharing. You're playing uh... like Doom. Remember? Are we family? Uh, but I thought I was on your Steam, but it's, this is not important for the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a second! <laughs> uh, for everyone listening at home, you can, if you log into someone else's Steam and install a game and then open your Steam, it should show up in your library and you can, it, you can click to play it and it'll show up on the other person, the person who owns it's Steam mm. and saying, do you want to allow this person to play this game? Yes, I used to do that when, uh, with Jesse. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, exactly. Uh, whichever one of the other lore boys gets a PlayStation first... I'll family share with. I get to family share with one person. You can have access to my over hundred games if you just get you a over a hundred games. I do. I have one hundred and nine on Steam. Yeah. I have like twenty on Steam. I, I, <laughs> I have I'm a like, fake gamer girl, yeah, guys. I think I have like eighty on Steam. I think I always wait till the Steam sales and buy anything that's under five dollars. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. buy it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I just punch your dog. I have under chest. twenty. I I have maybe twenty, and I haven't played every game on my Steam Live. I've had oh, my really. Uh, I've had my PlayStation Certainly for not. almost three years, and every month you get two to three games for free. Yeah, so, on PS Plus. I used so to yeah, play. most of those hundred games I didn't pay for, but yeah. I have on. Yeah, still having them. That's, yeah. that's something. I have Neopets. Oh, dude, that's I. I honestly liked Neopets, and I would play it today. <laughs> you can. You can I quote think, me. Can't you? I, I think the servers closed last year. Oh, uh, but I could be wrong. I'm canceling my date and finding out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe your date likes Neopets. Uh, yeah, why don't Why don't you guys just make your date that? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's fucking raise a grundo together or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good test. <laughs> it's a good test. Hey, yes, baby, want to come over and see my grundo? <laughs> <laughs> and like she understands. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> the one. Just so, so you Peter, know, it's famished. Yeah. <laughs> so, Peter, if we were looking for you on the internet, if you're looking for my grundo, if we're if, if somebody wanted to see your grundo, where do they go? <laughs> At Pete O'Donoghue on Twitter. If you can spell it, you can follow me. I do the artwork uh, on loreboys.wordpress.com and on O'Manahue at DeviantArt if you want to download your 1080p versions. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, also, our Twitch channel, I do all the artwork for that. I just, I'm the artist. He's it, the artist. That's it. He's the delicate soul. I yeah. am. And James. I'm frail. You can find me on PlayStation at J-A-Y-M-I-L-L-K-64. Jake's you want to find me on Steam, I won't buy you a milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm one armed man. Uh, I wanted to give one quick shout out. I uh, just got in touch with an old friend uh, who uh, she's an aspiring Twitch streamer, and she's doing very well lately. And I really recommend going check out her channel. Uh, her Which is what it is Twitch.tv slash Cat Link. 
K A T L I N K. Uh, she's really funny, and just check her out. She's really cool. What does she cool. play? Uh, she plays a ton of stuff. Uh, she does streamer. her own like. Uh, just like us. Yep. She does a bunch of like uh, variety streamers, three <laughs> D uh, animation stuff. Like she's into that. So oh, sometimes sick. she works on that stuff. Works on Blender. Yeah. Uh, really, really, <laughs> really cool person. Uh, I love her and her boyfriend, and they're trying to make it on Steam, and they're doing great. So check them out. Um, but you can find Ethan where. I'm at Ethan and the Dead Man on most platforms. Uh, if you like the show, please tell your friends. I know uh, most of you listening have told your friends. We really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you have the time, log into iTunes, create an iTunes account, uh, leave us a review. Just search the Lore Boys because it really helps us out. Uh, also, if you Google the Lore Boys, like even even if even for me, yeah. when I Google it at home, like I it, like the, the predictive result is that. But if you right. Google it, like. Just from anywhere. Yeah. We're like the first 20 results. But yeah. if you want to do something to help us out in like the most way possible for the least amount of time, go on iTunes and leave us a review. Yeah. Because that punch helps us punch up. Just right? stars. And, uh, you don't need to write anything. Yeah. It really helps yeah. us punch above our weight. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, so, if you, so good, actually. Yeah. yeah. If you really want to help us out uh, in the uh, very immediate uh, present, uh, you can subscribe to Lord Boys Premium. Yep. It's our premium service. We offer uh, special bonuses to anyone who, who decides to subscribe. Frequent uh, and sometimes, some would say, perverted gifts. Yeah. It's very I aff- wouldn't say that. It's very affordable. Uh, we have a special right now. It's only ninety nine ninety nine a month, uh, which is basically pe- peanuts, honestly. Yeah. Uh, us, we obviously make thousands of dollars a week off this podcast, so... You know, $99 a month is incomprehensibly small to us. Our day jobs are just hobbies, really. They're hobbies, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I would say. This, I mean, this is where we make most of our money. But for everyone who subscribes this week to Lore Boys Premium, we have a very special offer. I am offering myself, or should I say the clones of myself, you can... Uh, for each, nine other Ethans. For each <laughs> time you subscribe, you will get a, an Ethan. If you subscribe, if you make nine accounts and subscribe nine times, you will get nine Ethans that you can stack. They only can stand on each other. Though. They're, they're <laughs> un- inseparable. Yeah. yeah <laughs> well, I mean, they don't like to be apart from each other. That is for sure. They yeah. do a lot of fucking... Uh, oh so. no, that's too much of a mental picture. <laughs> <laughs> I know you too well. If you're squeamish, <laughs> yeah. maybe keep them separated. But yeah. they will get very ornery. I yeah. will say they're like guinea pigs. You don't want to leave them apart for too long. Oh, uh, gotta keep them separated. I never, yeah. had, I never had a guinea pig. Oh, poor you. <laughs> but you do have an Ethan. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, for everyone who subscribes, subscribes to Lore Boys Premium Silver, which is only uh, forty nine ninety nine a month, we will uh, give Peter a guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> to relive the to relive the childhood that he never had. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, the the things that we're going to spend that money on is I'm going to get some VHS copies of Beast Wars and a guinea pig. Yeah. I could just see like you in your apartment with your cat and just way too many guinea pigs. <laughs> oh like, god, yeah. yeah. Just both her and I just sitting on the couch like confused out of our mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the floor is just writhing guinea pigs. Oh god. And that constitutes Lord a Lord boys. boys. <laughs> oh, oh, guinea pig. Oh, guinea pig. Guinea pigs. Lord boys, Lord boys, guinea pigs. drinking slower than usual because going to exactly and there's a good chance she's not drinking at all yet so i don't want her to show up and i'm yeah dude changing myself already did you watch our wedding um no should i have (laughs) (laughs) nah nah this shit's dumb yeah well it just seems like really slow pace you know like if there was more like guns and explosions, more guns. <laughs> she, he he did marry an American, so oh yeah, maybe there was more guns than usual. I don't know. Ah, uh, dude, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, like maybe if there was like a love scene at the end or something. That... <laughs> 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 I were talking about the royal wedding, oh. and how I'd watch it if it was it. more exciting. I'd watch it. Hannah woke was... up. Hannah woke up early this morning to watch it. So. Oh yeah. yeah, really? She's British. Uh, oh. So, yeah. It's fair. I'm Canadian. I didn't watch Stephen Harper marry the goat or whatever he did. <laughs> yeah, that happened. I don't know. That was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> it was pretty bad. One of those, yeah. one of those screaming goats. Yeah. And do you, goat, take this prime minister to be your lovely wedded husband? <laughs> <laughs>